Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite, the explosive one, TNT, the INO, M-I-G-H-T, and we are here today with, with a very special guest. I want to tell you right now is that I present to you the sensei to Jonas and myself. She is the Meryl Streep of improvisation. Um, she is a force of nature to be reckoned with. She's unique. She's beautiful. She's a triple threat with, humani- with humility to boot. The one, the only, except no phony tank the dank. Thank you for having me. It is wonderful to see you again. I don't know. We are very excited. I don't know that I like the dank part. Tank is kind of tank, but <laughs> right, dank. We'll, let's go with tank. We'll, let's go with tank. <clears throat> all right, all right. That's I fine. I throw a little fine. sauce on there. I'm not going to lie. A little sauce. Like I live yeah, in a cave. It. Yeah, he dabbles it in sauce always. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today on the Crazy Town Podcast. Whether you're watching us live, well, somewhat live, video on our YouTube channel, you can get there at crazy ta- thecrazytown.com, or you're watching us on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, anywhere you can catch podcasts. Thank you for checking us out today. Tank, thank yes. you so much for coming on and being a guest host. We've missed you tremendously. Well, thank you for making me come to this and, you know, the, the whole blackmail situation. Otherwise, I would not have done this for anything in the world. But <laughs> I don't Absolutely. know. Remember, I, yeah, I texted and it was like, uh, you know, all that stuff we have on you, you're coming on the podcast or I'm going to give it to the press. Actually, the truth really was more of a, uh-oh, our last guest uh, canceled and we're desperate. <laughs> so I was like, mm, all right, fine. Now you owe me one or two or five. Absolutely. That's all right. I mean, we do owe you everything, to be yeah, honest. A little bit of backstory <laughs> on, on Tank. Um, we actually, she was our very first improvisational teacher. Um, so she taught us the basics, and it was the foundation for everything that we do on the channel to the, to this day. It's mm-hmm. it's 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 had just a ripple effect on the type of work that we do today, and we are forever mm-hmm. grateful to everything that she has shown us. And I just wanted to make sure that you know that. Absolutely, thank you. It's so and she's true. super cute to boot. Stop. Go on. Stop. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I am. I'm glad to call her my friend. Oh, absolutely, a thousand percent. So it, uh, it, we, we, you know, we were doing the podcast before we ever did improv, but I think improv has absolutely helped us hone our hone our craft here to keep yes. on rambling when we have nothing to talk about, which is what absolutely. we do all the time. You just yes and yourself. You got it. Exactly. Add details and maybe because and scenes are about relationships. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, listen to this woman. You might learn something out there, listeners, viewers. Exactly. exactly. What not to do. <laughs> hey, exactly. You, you ever want to learn what not to do, listen to our podcast. That's the first thing that you don't ever do is this. After that, you move forward and keep And going. to think that you fellas were so shy in my class. Like, oh, can we get you guys to talk? Yes, get up on that stage. Could you make eye contact with other members of the class? That's me. That's me. <laughs> it's, that's definitely me. You had more of a, you were hilarious, but you were more quiet, which meant that not like sh- you didn't appear shy, but like that meant everything that you said that was funny, like had so much more impact. Like I never knew what was going to come out of your mouth and it always killed. And then Jonas, of course, had so much enthusiasm. Uh, so that also yes. was fun, which I think is why you two make such a, such a lovely couple, um, why, why <laughs> y'all are so fun. Well, see, the funny thing is he has, he doesn't have as much energy and he's actually funny where I have a lot of energy and I'm trash and have nothing funny to say ever. Why are you just hilarious? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. So anyways, let's get into it. TNT, you told me you had something to talk about today. What do you what do you got to bring up? Um, Actually, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Tank here. First off, Jonas. I want to know, Jonas. uh, So you have, like I said, you are a sensei. We bow to your your superior prowess. What got you into improv to be to begin with? Did you say we're talking about tech gear? I said we're talking about Tank here. (laughs) Oh, I was like. 
I am not understanding how these two things go together, especially okay. because I don't know anything about tech gear. I'm not even no. sure. <laughs> we're, we're talking about we're talking about you. I want to know what first got you into improv. If what? you can believe it, I was very quiet and had no friends. And um, I saw a posting for a free two-hour workshop, and I don't know what made me go, but it sounded like fun. And I went, and I literally had more fun in those two hours than I had in like two previous years. So oh, wow. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I spent not unlike the pandemic. I spent like all my time at home unless I was working. So I went to that, had so much fun. It seemed like such low risk that I signed up the next day, and I've come across the email that's that said I would like to sign up for the class, and which is so cute. And um, I just kept going and I was very quiet still. And I used to sit in the back of the room and the teacher would say, all right, did everyone go? And I would just be like, <laughs> and uh, sometimes he would say, we see you back there. And, but I just had so much fun. And then finally I like had friends and you can do no wrong and failure is wonderful. And so yeah. I kept going and then I started volunteering and later worked at another theater and got to know all the improvisers. That's when Austin only had like 300 max, <clears throat> excuse me. So I knew everyone. And before I knew it, I was like, ah, oh, I'm an improviser. And then you I did are. it for 10-ish, 13-ish, I, I have to look it up, 13-ish years, 14, 15. Um, and you've been a part of uh, like some some acts as well, right? You've done mm -hmm. like, so Yeah, I've been in troops. My longest one is uh, The Better Half. Mm -hmm. I think you can find some clips online. Okay. Um, and I've been in a number of troops. One played only once, and then we abandoned it. Um, and oh, I've been wow. in a lot of shows, um, like, with two-month runs. I think the funniest one I've ever been in was called Danger, the Improvised Lifetime Movie. We did that for two months. It was so funny. At one point in the show, I felt like I was hallucinating. Like, I, my brain went to a whole new level. But wow. it was so fun and hanging out with really fun people and having stuff to do, stuff to look forward to. So, and then I also use improv in my daily life, and I'm using it right now by all this talking. <laughs> I think we Absolutely. do use improv more than we think we do on a daily basis. You, mm -hmm. A lot of people out there are using it more than they even realize they are. Um, Jonas, anything you want to? Oh, I was about. just gonna say uh, that you. So you. So when you hit, your brain hit that that new moment, would you say that that was improv or zen that you finally had reached this enlightened moment that you like did not know existed? Well, the concept is right, but no, I would not call it anything so cheapy. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, you, yeah, you, uh, you you hit the nail on the head with with improv. It's just it's you can do no wrong. It's great. I think that's the. It's it reminds me of like doing physical art because like. Your art is your art, no matter what. Like you, mm -hmm. everyone may think that it sucks, but it, it's your art. Like it doesn't matter if anybody else. It's so, and I like the fact that improv you get to act, and uh, you don't have to memorize any lines ever. Um, you don't have to do anything. I absolutely love that. You go to a rehearsal, you go to a class, you go to perform, and then you're done. And I, I absolutely love performing. I love being on stage, but I do not want to learn lines. Anytime I have, it's just been absolutely painful. And I've tried doing stand up, but then writing it and then oh, I, and memorizing it, I can't do it. Now I've gotten, and the better laughs I've gotten doing stand up, because I have done it a few times, have all been the stuff I've made up on the spot. So mm -hmm. I just need to trust myself and do that. Okay. What would you say to people who are kind of on the fence about improv? Because there's a lot of negative connotation associated with improv, it's, it's often the butt of a joke. Um, what would you say to people who are interested in improv but are kind of on the fence about it? Well, there are lots of free workshops. Almost actually, every single theater I've ever heard of has a free workshop, like to mm -hmm. to ensnare you, but also just so you can try it and see what the um, theatrical art form is like. Um, and so I would say go do a free workshop. You've got nothing to lose, and if you are nervous about going, you can go with a friend. Or just know you never have to see these people again. So that might make you a little bit more free rather than, oh, no, I'm going to embarrass myself. You're not seeing these people again. Go ahead and embarrass yourself. And then I'd also say what is improv because some people think it's stand-up. I've had students come to my class. Oh, yeah. Give us the definition. Stand. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, it's the theatrical art form where everything is made up on the spot. You might know the format, the genre that you're going to do. You might be doing a play in the form of Chekhov, but you're not actually memorizing lines. You're just going to be remembering like the drama and and uh, particular things like that. And if you're doing um, improvised Shakespeare, you might even know like this is going to be a drama. This is going to be a comedy. You might have already ascertained who the protagonist is going to be that night so that every week it's a different protagonist so everyone gets a chance. And you're gonna throw in a lot of forsooths and verilies and stuff like that. You have to really study it. Completely made up on the spot. And then sometimes there are improv games where you just do scenes, where you do montages. So um, I think it's great to go see improv because some people do not know what it is and it can really blow your mind. I, I love your enthusiasm. I'm, I'm telling you right now. What got you into teaching improv? Final question about you, and then I swear we'll get into some more some topics here. But what got you into teaching? Because Wait, I only get one more wow. question? Mm -hmm. No. Um, I mean, we can ask more. Um, well, I had, I think, I well, I had directed a show and absolutely loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they listen to me and they do what I say. So um, from then on, I was like, I had been doing improv for, I don't know, eight-ish years by then. And so I got to TA and see what that was like. And I was really nervous the first time I taught. But then, you know, I, I'd had so many teachers and gone through so many workshops and just really loved it. And because I'd been shy, I wanted, I well, I taught 101 mostly for seven years or whatever, six years or something, because I knew what it was like to go in as a 101-er and just mm -hmm. be really shy and awkward. Not that's that all entry, entry level. Uh, right, right, right. And so that was my favorite. Um, I did a lot of upper level teaching and I've done a lot of troops coaching and things like that. But I just kind of wanted to help them. And I just love it. Like I said, you two were disasters when you came in. Mm -hmm. And I brought out the best in you. So mm -hmm. you did. I would not be the person I was. I am today if it wasn't for Tank here. Uh, I don't want to take credit for this. <laughs> no. uh, I do want to give you the opportunity to name drop any uh, re reputable names that you've worked with in the past or that you've taught or that you've uh, had the opportunity to do improv with. Um, well, Tom Booker. Everyone knows Tom Booker. Oh, He's in Nashville. God. And I think he is, oh, I mean, there are stickers that say, I know, um, buttons that say, I know Tom Booker. We're so working on getting him on, on an episode of this, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to reach out to him about doing one in the future for sure. He's got <laughs> names to drop for days. Indeed. That was definitely when he first came to Austin. So I was in his very first improv class in oh, Austin. Okay. So he's done almost like 100 commercials. He's got reels on uh, YouTube if you want to see them. Really, really impressive stuff. Um so he's the legend um let's see well maggie may i think is um just an amazing stand-up she's in la um she's done conan and other shows like that but she does stand up now but she did improv back in the day and i just okay. absolutely adore her and she is a great stand-up so if you ever get the chance to see her i'd say that um, in my very first improv class was Noelle Wells. She went on to do Master of None and Saturday Night Live. She hmm. directed, produced, starred in um, Mr. Roosevelt, which was shot in Austin. Um, I really, really liked her, and I knew her as like a teenager, like when she was when she was a baby teenager. So she was like nineteen, and so um, really proud to have worked with her. And I know how very, very hard she's worked. And then I've done a lot of workshops with some famous people, Jill Bernard, who's amazing um, in the improv community. She's out of huge theater in Minneapolis, Minnesota is more. And um, my, Michael Hitchcock and Jamie Moyer and perhaps names that like everybody doesn't know, but like if you're in the comedy scene or if you're in improv, you know these people. All right, good, I like that, quite, quite the resume. Oh, Honestly. this Jiffy Pop hat is so hot. <laughs> oh. It does remind me of a bag of Jiffy Pop. I know. You're watching on YouTube to see the Jiffy Pop hat. I'm sorry. Tank, <laughs> have you, in fact, ever made Jiffy Pop on the stove? I never have because it's disgusting. Oh, you don't like popcorn? They're not, no, I love popcorn, but popcorn is like my favorite, but Jiffy Pop isn't. But now I'm thinking salt shaker. Oh, yeah. 
It does look like a salt shaker hat. Uh, TNT, have you ever made Jiffy Pop popcorn on the stove? Jesus, man. A long, long, long time ago. But, you know, let's just say no so I appeal to the younger generation. <laughs> You're like, Jiffy Pop, get out of here, boomer. <laughs> I, I don't want to alienate our Zoomer audience, so no, I don't know what you're talking about. You're like, ew, who eats popcorn, period? <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. I, I love do love popcorn cream. myself. <laughs> I'm a fan as well. Do you just go plain butter, or do you uh, or do you get all the little fancy uh, seasoned salts and stuff and put on there? I'm vegan, so I, but I used to love butter. Um, but I usually get it like in a package with like oil and sea salt or something. But it, it's not as good as butter, no matter what they say. How long have you been vegan for? I've been vegetarian for about thirty years, and I've been vegan for ten ish. And when I say vegan, the truth is I also eat milk chocolate. <laughs> so I'm like 90. No, I'm like 10% vegan and my body is filled with 90% chocolate. No no judgment here. No judgment. Well, I judge myself because of the poor cows. Right? I'm trying to better. Okay, now this cape is getting hot. That's the, Joseph, you, I mean, the tank, you can go ahead and take it off. If you, no, if you no, this is just giving me my power. Honestly, this feels, great. <laughs> this feels great. I'm going to do this at work from now on. This is amazing because this room gets hot. So you wear the cape, <laughs> All right. Well, the next I'm question. going to jump into our first story that we're going to talk about today. Right, then, you, real want me, quick. you want me to do mine or you want to do yours? I'll go, I'll go with one as a warm up, and then we'll get right, into, it, we'll get into yours. So let me show you the picture of a man that this okay. actually that actually did this, and we'll play a game. Uh, can you can you guess what this man did? All right, Correct my world. All right, <laughs> all right. Thank you. First, what what do you think he did? Well, I can't help but say it looks like he went to jail. Um, <laughs> so we know he did oh, that. no, the guy, in the, the guy in the gif rocked my world. Let's see him a little bit more. He looked damn. Yeah, right? There's that guy. Listen. So, um, okay. So when anyway. He, yeah, um, go ahead. What, what, yeah, do, you yeah, what do you think he did? Well, he's wearing a flannel shirt. So I'm mm -hmm. going to say he's Canadian and he tapped some maple uh, trees to get the sap when he wasn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I say that with all reverence as a Canadian. That's good. No, oh, I forgot you were Canadian. <laughs> I'm going to say is that he smuggled uh, wolverines into South America. Ooh. And your oh, mic is You've lost your mic. Jonas. Am I back now? Yeah, yeah you're, you're back. back. Okay, cool. So I'm going to say... Uh, both of you are correct. No. Uh, so basically <laughs> no. what happened in Oregon is this happened in Oregon, but uh, back in actually a year ago. So there were two people. Mm -hmm. They were having an argument. It got it got a little heated. So as any normal person would do, he lit a firework and threw it at the lady that he was having an argument with. It was one of those. It said mortar based fireworks. So maybe like a, a Roman candle. So it's like shooting off fireballs. Well, little did they know that close to here, there was a few U-Haul trucks sitting around. But also on top of that, what they didn't know is that there was a third party siphoning gas out of the U-Haul trucks as this was going on <laughs> illegally, to which the four U-Haul trucks burst into flames and the man who was siphoning it ran off pants and sleeve on fire who they never found so who knows what happened to that man so he ended up going to jail for setting four u-haul trucks on fire and uh and there was a man who potentially just died burned up in the woods somewhere oh i would God. like to say if i may stop drop and roll if your clothes are on fire because the oxygen makes it makes it all worse you know stop drop and roll you do not teach that anymore yeah, do they not teach that anymore? I don't know. I was just watching a TV show. Um, uh, I'm watching a British show called Line of Duty or Line of Fire. Line of Duty, I think. And some guy was on fire and I just was like, uh, and he was like all burning. And I was like, stop, drop and roll. Stop, drop and roll. Maybe it was because it was Britain. They didn't have those rules. I don't know. And also rule of threes is comedy. Come on. That's like improv 101. Stop, drop, roll. Three. Mm. So now wait. Yeah. So the guy who did it ran off, burned to death because he didn't stop drop and roll. So who's the guy who was uh, arrested? That's the man who threw the firework at the lady, which then unintentionally caught the U-Haul trucks on fire. 
Now I kind of feel like that wasn't his fault. He just <laughs> he just wanted to disrespect and get his point across to this lady, and it just so happened that there was a U-Haul truck. Did he go to what was the charge that he got brought up on? Oh, let's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll see exactly what he got arrested for. Um, so, but what are the chances that you're going to shoot, first off, that you're going to have a firework ready to throw at somebody, two, you throw it, and there happens to be another criminal doing something else. He got a criminal mischief, reckless burning, and reckless endangerment. Okay. Well, those are all proper charges. (laughs) Those are actually all proper charges. If it was like assault or like arson or like murder, I would be like, all right, that's a little excessive. But I, I picture this guy holding a Roman candle out, pointing it at this lady, and just like thinking it's just going to be like, ha ha, get out of my face. And it kind of went left after that. Yeah, I love that he just had it in his back pocket, you know, just like, oh, yeah, well. <laughs> Maybe and it just happens to be piles of flammable liquids on the ground a few, yeah. a few spaces away. <laughs> right. Reality can be improv, too. <laughs> well, I'll pull out my Roman candle and... <laughs> Oh, that's one of the that's one of the rules. The don't, Jonah. Don't. <laughs> saw, saw your cringe come across you. <laughs> I okay. forgot all about that until. Okay, we just need to sidebar this and say this drives me crazy. And all oh my and don't all my so, students learn day one. You do not. Why would your hand become a phone? It doesn't. And so I want y'all whenever you watch like stand up or something. Um, watch do they hold the phone or do they become the phone because i lose all respect for them but seth myers who has an improv background watch him when he's like calling rudy giuliana rudy giuliani or something he holds his phone he'll hold, and I, phone. He'll hold the phone not okay. make his hand into the phone why would your hand because when you're writing you don't pretend your your finger is a pen you hold the pen why yeah. do we need to why would you, you don't say, become the object you hold, you the, hold the object yeah yeah it makes sense I yeah, have you don't eat scissors scissors a lot of people do this for scissors but it does look a little weird because like you can't quite tell what that is so you know what you just don't have scissors in your scene wow scissors aren't allowed in improv it's getting real hot here. It's getting hot here. <laughs> i'm sorry i didn't mean i didn't mean to trigger you it was jonas's fault i know i i'm i uh I am. We talked about it earlier. I'm a little bit trash. It's okay. So, um, um, stop, yeah, drop, and roll. That's, stop, drop, and roll. Number one. If we learn nothing else from this podcast, if you're ever on fire, do not flail. Stop, drop, and roll. Yeah. If we learned anything, that's one one of the two things. I want everyone hold the, <sighs> hold the phone. Stop, drop, and roll. Uh, my coworker me. has a couple of times done this. Like, okay, I'll call you, and I just cringe, and I don't say anything because I'm not his rap teacher, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, yes, I will call you. <laughs> this story actually reminds me of a lot of like uh, what's going down in the uh, southeast right now with the gas shortage. Mm-hmm. Okay. I recently just read that, uh, you know, how they've been hoarding gas and putting it in plastic bags or buying a bunch of gas tanks and putting it in there. There was a guy who set his Hummer on fire when he decided to have a bunch of gas tanks in the back and he decided to light a cigarette. It, this just jogged my memory to that. Wait I, a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Yeah, so if you're happen. hauling gas, why yeah. would you be smoking? Yeah. Because uh, of, of that sweet, sweet nicotine, Joan. I need <laughs> that. I need it. Get it in. He, he couldn't wait five minutes to get home and unload his gas that he has in a fish tank that he had in his basement. Because yeah. <laughs> I Imagine would see all that. pictures of people online with just filling up buckets and shit. Just yeah. like... Fumes are fumes are uh, also an accelerant. They uh, they're flammable as well. Well, that's what they say. They say gas itself isn't flammable. It's the fumes. Oh, is that right? Huh. I enough. mean, the fumes will uh, definitely ignite very fast. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Can I know? also point out society-wise that how rude that is to like take the gas all for yourself and not let others have the gas. Um, that, uh, the other day I went to get cat litter. Don't have a cat. It's just fun. Uh, I like to spray it on the bed and then just roll in it sometimes. But, um, and there were two, I really wanted to go and get two, I have two cats. I wanted to get like two cat litter buckets and there were only two left in the Target. And so I only took one 
because I was like, oh. I don't want to be the person who has to, how terrible if, a, if a someone else needed cat litter and there, there's none left. I don't want to be that person. Um, Wait a second. So you didn't get enough cat litter to leave some for somebody else? Or you no, just didn't I took get one of the two. Game? There were two oh. left and I don't need two immediately. I just like to have like a backup. Yeah, yeah. And I, so I was like, I don't want to be the person that inconveniences the next person when I'm not desperate. Um, I needed one. I would take if it was if there was one left. I would have been the one to take it. But there were two, and I don't want to be that person. And so, who are all these gas hoarders who aren't kind to other people in society? Who are like, I'll take the gas before you take it. Just like the toilet paper run. That's what I was. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Or like the people who bought like ten thousand dollars worth of hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. and then they're like, "Oh shit, I have no one to sell it to." And then the stores are like, "Oh no, you can't bring that back." Mm -hmm. I love that. Those are the best stories where they got caught with like ten grand worth of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't need that much toilet paper. We can use a sock if necessary. You could just jump in the shower right after. We're at home. <laughs> right. No TNT. Like I'm saying, like if it worse comes to worse, you. You could use a sock or something like you could use fabric. Like you're going to be okay without toilet paper. I'm not saying it's ideal. I'm saying, yeah, or the shower. Dante, you've never had a crotch towel that you just use when you, you know, you're a little dirty? Um, no, I have not. No, no. Well, no. that's good because don't y'all share a bathroom and you don't want to pick up no, a No, we do not off. share a bathroom. I'm going to tell okay. you that right now. I would <laughs> not be over the age of 30 years old sharing a bathroom with another male. That's not going to happen. My butt cheeks are not touching the same toilet that this man's butt cheeks touch. That's not going to happen. All right? What if we work at the bathroom, same place? I have my own bathroom. Yeah, I've what if we work at the same Burger the King? Of your bathroom. <laughs> You've never seen it? No. You just do a hover poo. I'm not, I'm not hovering. No, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> a hover poo. A hover oh, poo. I can, and I then like you can get your sock. And take care of your business. Hover poo. <laughs> no, no, we have our own bathrooms. Thank you. <laughs> our own bathroom. Oh, wait, hold on. But but I know that like that's the hover thing is a real thing because I've heard lots of women say that they will oh, not yeah. sit in a, in a in a public bathroom. They just hover and just let it happen. Mm -hmm. Men don't have to do that because we have to sit down to only to go number two. So oh, you got to put down the toilet paper and whatnot. Or That's the socks, what, whatever see, you have. And that, Take I'm your a, socks I'm off. A rapper. I'm a rapper, not a not a hover. I've never hovered, but I will rap. Like I'll put down two and three plies of like barrier toilet paper if I'm going in public. I'm not hovering. That's in that's insane. That's insanity Ooh. to me. Ooh, let me ask y'all something. So a male friend of mine recently told me, because we were talking about shaking hands post COVID. And he said that in his experience, maybe 60% of guys wash their hands after they go to the bathroom. And I was, I'm curious, how do you feel about that percentage? Ooh, I agree with the percentage, but I will have to say is that I'm in the 60% that washes their hands mm -hmm. every time. Yeah. 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 I wash my hands well, but Oh, I, I, yeah. You know, and it's funny until you said that I can't tell you how many times I've been like out at a bar and stuff pre COVID and you, and you're like, Oh, well, you, you just see so many people like say if there's a line in the guy's bathroom. It's like, yeah, I would say it might even be less than that because like, that would be two out of every three guys washing their hands. And like, especially in like a bar environment, people are just like, get out of here eh, quick. And they're just, it's like, hmm. What do they need to wash their hands if they don't, if they just somehow get it out and don't touch themselves? How do well, you get it out and not touch yourself? Explain <laughs> to me the science behind that. What do you do? Hover. <laughs> you just, oh, there it is. They stopped dropping it back. Back. What do you? Do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a, that's a really gross statistic, but unfortunately I believe it's true. Well, I, I have decided I'm never shaking hands again, but also there's the <laughs> optics. Oh, for real. There's the optics of it. Like, we don't know what you did in there. Plus, uh, other people have then touched, like, the, the latch to the door and, and the there's sink. stuff in there. The um, yeah, I'm not shaking hands anymore, but I'm going to do it um, in a very kind of respectful way. I'm just going to be like, oh, COVID, <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. So I don't want the person <laughs> to feel like, I think you're dirty. I don't want to do that, but I'm just going <laughs> to. And also, how fun would it be if everyone jazz hands? I, would I like agree. That. It would be. <laughs> Like, like, I, I can just imagine it being woman. like 2037 and someone walks up to tank to, and, and she, and she's just like COVID and they're like, 
that was 15 years ago and you're like covid haven't like, been sick since i like the elbow <laughs> bump i like the yeah elbow the elbow bump. bump is good no but you yeah. get closer to the person that way i don't also it looks stupid. well so the idea behind a handshake originally was to show you didn't have a weapon in your hand right so jazz hands covers hmm. it and it's just adorable it is <laughs> yeah hello <laughs> I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad. So, at but it. what to, to piggyback off what you're talking about? I even like when I wash my hands, I use the paper towel to open the bathroom door so I don't then get the non washed cooties from the door on my hand because it just negates everything you just did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, so, I hate restrooms that don't have paper towels. I understand for the earth purpose, but when they only have hand dryers, I'm like, I gotta be like, use my foot mm -hmm. to like open up the door. It's really, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's a hard life we live. I'll take my shirt sometimes and open the door if, if oh, I absolutely have to. Nice. I'd rather yeah. my shirt get dirty than my hands, which I'm going to use to eat food or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Either way, um, yeah. Very, very, very interesting story, Jonas. Uh, that the guy ended up going to jail after, after all. Yeah, of that. You gotta, yeah, for the endangerment and stuff. That's that's nuts. Yeah, I uh. I mean, he should I, have gone to jail. For what that. I've taken from that is don't use your fireworks on humans. No, and karma's no. a bitch. I'm not. I'm not. Gonna, I mean, karma is a bitch, but <laughs> I'm not going to tell any stories about me being a young man and throwing fireworks out of the car window at kids while they came home from school because that would be awful. And who would do that? No, listen. A tyrant. A, a monster. I know. What are you? What are you drinking there? By the way, uh, Tank. Is that well, I have my life? sippy cup because it's adorable. And um, and also because I use reusable straws and there's a hole in it as well. Some fancy lady. It's um herbal hibiscus iced tea because I was finding I wasn't drinking enough water. So because it, it's boring, <laughs> so I've been trying to drink teas. There is that, so is that flower water then? Hibiscus. Hibiscus is a flower. Yes. Yeah, it's hibiscus and other essences. And I always add a lot of water to it, so and so even so, it's darker. I swear, I'm I... not getting enough essence in my diet. Mm. <laughs> like uh, doctors always mm -hmm. like, you need to get more essence. Like, oh, know, doc. we got a little friend here. Oh, she's going oh, away. who is it? This is Millie, and recently I told her I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> I For those so of you bad. not watching, it's it is it is a kitty cat. She, okay. oh, oh. <laughs> it's my girlfriend. No, um, she, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's my cat. She, uh, she wakes me up very early every morning, and I could not handle it recently. And I've never said that to anybody. I mean, I would say it to Trump or Hitler, but Millie came in the close third. I was like, I hate you, and I was like hitting the bed. She wasn't even on the bed. I was, and I would never hit her, of course. But I was just like trying to maybe scare her into going into the other room. Can we get her on camera a little bit? This little bitch doesn't need her like five <laughs> minutes. Hey, Millie. Mama. Mama. But she she's usually like, what's very here. interesting out there. Yeah, no yeah. She well, she's in Not charge me. of guarding the house. I think her and her sister all the time. So this is why I need litter. But she um she snores here all day during work and snorts sometimes. Um, yep. and I I have I do I do love her. Not all the time. Though. She isn't. She is not media trained. I can tell you that much. Mm -mm. No. Look at her not even making eye contact with the camera. <laughs> know, There's a lot right? of training to do. All right. Well, we can get into story number two here. Oh. All right. Let's um, go. Very interesting. Now, honestly, I just found out today is that <laughs> Tank is a uh, vegetarian, vegan for over 10 years now. But uh, Jonas and I, we do uh, partake <laughs> in the eating of meat every once in a while. I want to ask either one of you and viewers at home, are you familiar with the term high meat? Like H I G H? Yes. H I G H meat. Is that when you never snack heard of it. it? Or like <laughs> Jenga? <laughs> I'm going to eat my triple cheeseburger. That's high meat. Yeah, that, that, very close. Not at all. All right. So, uh, <laughs> high meat is uh, currently a, a trend. It's actually been around for, for a long time, but it's uh, been adopted by a community of adventurous eaters. And it refers to basically people eating any type of raw meat that has gone un that has gone months of essentially decay. It's bad meat. People are out here eating bad, decayed, 
fermented meat in order to get high. Oh, they're getting high off it. Yes. Well, if that doesn't want to turn you into a vegetarian, I don't know what would. <laughs> I swear to God, if somebody showed up with a brick of gray ground beef, I am not touching that stuff. No, I'm not going to bring up any pictures because, frankly, it's it's pretty disgusting. Um, but there it are tons good. of pictures on Twitter, on the internet, for high meat. And you basically see moldy meat or meat that is, like, slimy with just, like, white fungus growing on it and there's youtube videos and there's people that are advocating for eating this meat for scientific benefits but none of the science is proven right and right like i said like the recreational idea of this meat giving them some sort of buzz it sounds like they were already high before they ate it <laughs> because i agree hi <laughs> hi meat yeah um is it the fungus that's getting them high? Because it definitely isn't the meat. No, they, a lot of people are saying is that it's it's the bacteria. Now, <laughs> it has to be done properly. There is actually like there's, there's <laughs> websites dedicated to the proper way to make your meat high meat and edible. Because obviously you can you're dealing with like E. coli and botulism and and stuff that can obviously just give you like food poisoning in the long run. But there are ways to properly uh treat your meat so that it is uh good for eating and you can um kind of up the up the odds of you getting the bacteria necessary to get you the the high the euphoria that that you're looking for my first question did yes. they describe what the high is like is it like smoking weed is it like tripping or like what do you what what do you get from it Okay, so from the articles that I have read, and I have read a few articles on this, they say that it's kind of a mixed bag and it's kind of like a, a mystery dip when you're dealing with it. Because, oh. <laughs> because you're dealing, oh, okay. Because you're dealing with, uh, you, know, you never know how much bacteria of a certain type is going to and is, is going to show up when you're treating your meat. Um, treat so your meat. You gotta treat your meat well, or it's gonna treat you bad. There's a, there's a family program tank out. Have you? <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to do a toilet hover after that. I think it's gonna go everywhere. I think it's it's more of a pants situation so, involved in there. So, so you just have to you treat it the way that it is, and like a lot of these people are leaving this meat out in like uh, cool, dark places for months on end, and then eating it. And you can find YouTube videos where people are doing this on YouTube and they'll show you the meat before and they'll show them eating it. And then they'll give you kind of like whatever results they have. Now, who is the first person to do this and why? I have no idea who the, who, who the founder of high meat was. is. Yeah, I don't know. but uh, The Elon Musk of, of high meat. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's going around currently. And there, like I said, I've, I've looked it up on YouTube. There's quite a few videos of people eating this stuff on camera. Um, Vice just recently did an article on it, which kind of went viral. And it, yeah, viral it's... being the key. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no nice. shit. And, but and like... it's, it's going around. So essentially, like, you could get a variety of bacteria, so they don't really know exactly how high you're going to get or what type of high you're yeah. going to get. Yes. Like, there's ways to, like I said, there's ways to treat it so that you do not necessarily, uh, so that you lessen a chance of getting, like, some of the ill effects. Oh, my God. But for, for, the, for the most part, man, it's just like, you know, you, you're rolling to die. With, with so you're meat. like basically getting an immune response and you're either going to get sick or you're going to feel off for a few days and you're going to be like, oh, damn, that raw old turkey really got me. Or you can have one of the most <laughs> intense trips you've ever had. I so, guess. you know, some people will do that, but they won't get the COVID shot because it's too dangerous. I would love to see the Venn diagram <laughs> of that. <laughs> The overlap oh of like high meat eaters to anti vaxxers. Yes. Yeah. It's like I'm talking to two Jonases. All right. Yeah, I mean, that's true. It's true. It's true. You're Thank you. Right. You're absolutely right. Twinsies. So I just want to know like, uh, well, obviously, no. uh, Tank, I don't think you would ever do this. Pretty but sure no. Me and Jonas have been talking about uh, I procured something for content. And uh, I'm trying to get Jonas to eat. Uh, we have insects that we have, and I want to eat those on camera and kind of like give our uh, 
our take on it. That video is coming, by the way. I'm telling you It'll right come. now, listeners and or viewers, tune in to the YouTube channel. That video is coming. And we're going to eat insects for the video. Mm -hmm. And he's been a little adverse to that. And then I was Are they like, dead well, or alive? They're dead. Yeah, they're okay. dead. They're cooked, processed. They're like dehydrated or something. Yeah, yeah they're, they're processed. And, they're and supposed to be high protein. I guess maybe it depends on the bug. Like, you're not going to get a lot out of an ant or a mosquito, but no. a beetle. Or... Have, it's like crickets. Cri crickets. Crickets and, meal <laughs> and mealworms. Those are up and coming <laughs> crips, by the way. Cricket. <laughs> Little baby I, I never realized it was an automatic pia. Like, cricket. Cricket. Okay. It is an onomatopoeia. <laughs> I love onomatopoeia words, by the way. I love the word onomatopoeia. But it's like, why is an onomatopoeia an onomatopoeia? Just like abbreviation. Why is that so long? I think about things sometimes. Abbreviation is a very long word for what it means. I've never thought about that. Wow. Would you eat would you eat bugs? Is that within the vegan lifestyle? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> So she, she's like, duh, no. So what, I, about, um, what about high meat? Is that in the vegan? Well, no. Um, <laughs> I did speed dating. I've done speed dating a few times. And one time I was doing it and the guy's job was he had his own business and he like took bugs and he put them in the freezer and then he sold those and like he made tons of money. And I was like, so you're a bug murderer. I could... And then you're stuck there. You've got like another <laughs> 10 minutes before you can move on. <sighs> so one of the first things you said to him was, so you're a bug murderer. And then you just sat there awkwardly for the rest of the time. <laughs> no, like, I was just like, oh, well, that's unique. And I always figure like, at least I get, I can get an improv character or something out of this. And I'm just like, oh, got you into that. But speed dating is really fun because you just yes and them. You know, you can tell within the first 10 seconds whether or not you're interested and then you just bullshit until you move on. You know, you know, you know, you know, what's funny about that story to me is that it was the fact that he murdered bugs that, that kind of was the, the drive away point for you. Where Absolutely. It been like, you chose this as a profession that would have been like, if some woman told me that she was like, oh yeah, I'm an entomologist and I keep bugs in my refrigerator, I'd be like, well, I don't necessarily want to keep a... Uh, my, my, my food in the same refrigerator that you're keeping your bugs, I don't think this is going to work out. No, <laughs> to me, it was the fact that he took live ones, put them in his freezer for this purpose of murdering them. And he sold, he sold them to, like, I think other companies, like, like you know, like when chocolate bars have bugs in them or something. Like oh, okay. Tea. So I think that's what he did. Yeah, you can, you can definitely get that. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what he did. And... Uh, I mean, it's murder. So he was the supplier of the ants to the chocolate-covered ants company. Right, right. Like. Exactly. And I could not run away fast enough, except I couldn't because I was stuck in a circle. And I wanted I to get never, the next one. I've never done speed dating before, but I've always thought it would be interesting. Oh, my gosh. So fun. Because you just bullshit the entire time. Hmm. <laughs> Because you don't, you, you know, if you've got 12 guys or whatever you want to date, whoever, whomever, you, you, what, you're going to like one of them. And so you're bullshitting the rest of the time. And I would just do improv and sound like I was interested when I was absolutely not. And I would just yes and, and I would add details. And um, and then I'd be like, goodbye. Only now I would be like, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, and one time I did it, and the guy I got was a guy I'd gone on an awkward date with. Oh, like in real, like you'd already went on a date with him previously. Oh my god, how awkward that would be! I just, oh yes, and did him like I liked him when I did not, in fact. What What was awkward about the date? You gotta know. He was he a says. lot older than I was, and he talked a lot about his ex-wife. That was fun. Oh my god, um, that's, a, that's a, a winner right there. I Jesus. just was like, thank you for sharing. <laughs> so that's a word to uh all the listeners out there do not talk about your ex-wife on, on a first date like yeah. i don't care that you have an ex-wife i care that i'm hearing about her on a first date yeah. right 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 the mention of an ex-wife on the first date comes up because hey i was married sure but then when you go into talking about everything she did wrong then you're like oh wow you sound like a complete a-hole well why is it ex-wives are always crazy 
They're not, right. surely they're not always crazy. And maybe it's because, mm -hmm. oh, so there was food left over after I ate when we went to dinner. And is, is it okay that I'm talking about this when we're talking about bugs? Do Absolutely. You want to okay. Oh, we, we are full of tangents here. So okay, okay. Good. Full of tangents could be the name of your new podcast or, or your improv troupe. <laughs> improv troupe, great new. So, that actually would be a great name. We went to, we got Cuban food and it was so good, but I only ate like half of it. And the, the waitress said like, do you want to take the, you know, the rest home? And I really debated because yeah, I did want to take the rest home. It was great. But I also felt like, what's the etiquette here? Like he offered to buy me dinner. He didn't offer to buy me dinner and lunch for the next day. So I said, oh no, no, but I just really wanted it. Now I should have, what do you do in that? What's the etiquette? Oh, do you take, take it home? That shit home? Oh I'm yeah, I think yeah, I think if you're on a date, if well if you're on a date and you get bought a meal, if you don't eat it all, I mean that's still your meal, right? You don't have to throw it in the trash. Right. But I was like, I just didn't know. And I've regretted it ever since because the meal was the best <laughs> part of the date. All right. So I'm gonna give you a little insight here. Okay. As as a woman, etiquette. <laughs> as a woman. I mean not, not me. <laughs> he says what's his beard. <laughs> I'm saying as as a woman, the etiquette for that is you 100% have every right to take that food home with you. 1000%. Yes. All right. As a man, it is your job to put that meal on the back seat and hope she forgets it so that you can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, we'll just put that in the back Keep real that. quick. Oh, have a good night. Keep that. <laughs> I've been on numerous dates where I'll be like, oh, she forgot her half of a turkey club in the back of the car. I guess now I have half of a turkey club. Or does that leave a window to be like, oh, you forgot half your food in my car. Let's get together so I can get that back to you. Because it's been in my car all night and now it has mold on no, it. Yeah, nobody wants it. it after that. I got nobody this high it. meat for you <laughs> in my trunk that you left there last week. It all comes full circle. <laughs> the end is in the beginning. Yes. Exactly. And no, I would definitely not eat high meat. Um, That's the thing. I won't even eat a I won't even eat a sandwich if it's spent the night in the car. Mm -mm. Like I'm I'm good. If it's not no, I've left, uh, put in the refrigerator, I'm not touching it. I've left it like I'll cook something and leave it on the counter for a little while. I gotta cut it up or whatever. But one night I made like a chicken taco with some chicken I made. I left the entire effing container on the counter all night. All that stuff on the trash. Yeah, you, that's so dangerous. Yeah. Oh yeah, my my mother always had a had a thing with people like essential talking about like uh, food and our aversions to like things being done to food. My mother always had a thing where like if I walked past her plate of food too fast, she would get mad at me because she would say that I was fanning her food. I was pushing air across her food <laughs> and getting particles on her food. Well, you know, it seems irrational. To a certain degree, she's kind of right because you know there's particulate and skin flakes and just dander flying around in the air. You know, I mean, but you can't true, get past yeah. that. You can't. Get, it's, it's gonna happen. Um, Do you know how much dust and dander we eat on a weekly basis on the stuff bugs. that just happens to hit our food? Yeah. yeah. So I have to say is that a little bit of that is with me now, where I can't stand to leave food like open air for like a long period of time. And if I go to like a cookout or a picnic or like even like a potluck or something, mm. I see all of that food open air. I don't want to eat any of the food that's over there. Even like buffets, like- buffets I'll never do of, a buffet again. It, well, oh, after COVID, I probably no. won't do a buffet. Never. Okay. okay. I thought, did you have a, a previous aversion to a buffet? No, but you have to think of how many people have touched those tongs as you go down or those ladles or something. And having gone to the bathroom and not washed their hands or whatever, I'm like, I'm not. Mm -hmm. no. Oh, and they change the the plates of flu food because it runs out. They bring, but they don't change those tongs. Those, they just lift no. it up, put it down, put the new tong down. That's I've fair. never thought of that aspect of it in my life. That's fair. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's Ooh. like we were living in a different world <laughs> prior yeah. to this. Now oh this yeah, yeah. Hygiene conscious. was very much not prominence on anyone's mind back in you thought it was but when you think about it in retrospect you're like we were really dirty getting germs all over everybody at the beginning of COVID, i watched a video on proper hand washing and i was stunned because i've always washed my hands and i realized i don't think i do my thumbs and i don't think i do the back of my hands it's always more like this and i was like wow a person who thinks they do it okay and now i do it for a lot longer and i have to say whenever i've washed my hands like in the restroom and i've seen someone like really really washing i've always thought the hell did they do in there that they need to wash so well but now i get it now i really get it right here you were shaming them and they were actually doing proper hand washing technique the whole time 
Yeah, well, I mean, not so much shame. I never said anything, but I always thought like, did something happen? Was there an explosion? Then why do you need to do all that? And now- you walk up to him. Where did they hide the body? Yeah, you elbow them and go, hey, got really dirty in there, huh? And they're like- well, Now I'll just be like, COVID! Yeah. Do you know why I don't like potlucks? Because I have no clue what the hell that person's house looks like. Mm. And how clean they keep their utensils, where they stick in their finger and lick, well, how's this taste? And, and then putting their fingers back in. That's I always agree. been my issue. Like, uh uh. How, how are you about eating other people's cooking? Which uh, one? Tank. Um, well, it gets a little tricky being vegan, and a lot of people oh, aren't. Yeah. So I usually bring some, I mean, <laughs> I don't have friends, but I would bring something vegan and I can just eat my own thing. What? What? what you, got you, a friend you got a friend oh. in me. Yeah. But we've never had a we've never had a, a potluck. I make a killer vegan curry, but I could totally understand if you didn't want to taste taste. No, if you said it was vegan, I would do that. Oh. I mean, I guess I guess nowadays I don't know if now going back into society how I'll feel, but like sounds good. Fair. Well, I'll rephrase because if it was like, say, like I had a group of friends coming over and they all brought some cookies or some sloppy joes mm -hmm. or random whatever, that'd be okay because I know my friends, I vet my friends, I've been to my friends' houses. But coworkers and stuff that mm -hmm. you have no idea, there's people that work in your office that you've never been to their house. You've never talked to them for more than a handful of minutes. Like they could be the dirtiest bird in the world making guacamole and like, and you're like, mm. they have cats and dogs and the hairs getting in there. Or they have roaches. That's they not really touch. any different from a restaurant, though. We don't know what's going on back there. I mean, that is fair. That's fair. I'm never eating out again. Thanks. Thanks, Tank. <laughs> it's even never less going trustworthy with a restaurant. It's very true. It's very true. Well, no, I'm I'm get... oh. oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Currently, my kitchen is gross. It's, like, never been so bad. So this Take will possibly give me it. incentive to go clean it. But, um... Yeah, I would never want to eat out of someone else's kitchen if it looked like that. Um, okay, I'm so, going to just cook <laughs> right. I say so, that. I, like so I wanted to talk about this. I want to make sure we got this in. So... I know, uh, TNT, I know you're familiar because it's been really a hot topic lately. And I don't know, Tank, if you are, um, about Dogecoin. Are you familiar with, have you heard about it lately, Tank, about the, 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 the phenomenon of Dogecoin? Do you mean like Deutsche? Like the bank? No. It is, there's a, there's a cryptocurrency. Are you familiar with cryptocurrencies at all? In theory. Okay. So, so there Which was, there was one is. that, that it started out as a joke. And people bought it when it was under a cent. And then now it shot up to being in value. Like it hit like 75 cents. So some people have been become millionaires because they had hundreds of thousands of these crypto coins that are now worth more than half a cent, more than half a dollar. And, and they, so now all these people have gotten rich. Well, you know, so there was a story. This happened in Albuquerque, New Mexico. There was a woman who met a man on Tinder he was 21. She was 25. And I don't know. He must have been bragging about his Dogecoin millionaire status now or whatever. So they, uh, you know, they went on a date and uh, they talked about eating they, bugs. Yeah. They're were, they were like, you know, hey, c do you care if yeah, I take this half of my sandwich home? Is that proper <laughs> etiquette? You know, all those my ex wife would really love this half a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. So they, they were getting on all of that. So they go home, you know, and things start getting hot and heavy. And, you know, they, he's like, they're getting a nice little nightcap on. And she decided that um, she wanted him to have unprotected sex with her, which he was not okay with. So what ended up happening? She ended up pulling a gun on him and making him ejaculate inside her because she wanted a Doge millionaire baby. <gasps> and, of course, she got arrested for this. That's right. That's yeah, the, the, the headline reads, Woman forced Dogecoin millionaire to ejaculate inside her at gunpoint. Forced me to. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. so I was like, first, well, that got my, real, real quick. My, my, my immediately thought, besides the, hor the, the horrible act of this, heinous act of this crime, is I don't know if I could keep it up to be able to make that happen if someone's holding a gun on me. Yeah. 
Well, if there's stimulation, then sometimes <laughs> you, if there's oral stimulation, does that make you feel even more uncomfortable? <laughs> then sometimes with a guy, there's, you, you don't want to do it, but under the um, so oh, I mean, um, we walk into a we walk into Sam's Club and we're like, ooh, a tractor. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know? <laughs> so I mean, that doesn't mean he wants to do any of that, okay. uh, which yeah. you wouldn't at gunpoint. Can I can I raise my hand? Yes. Quick? Yeah. Go ahead. All right. A uh, long term owner of a penis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> me too. I've got one in my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> It's Never been person. able to um, achieve uh, with the fear of being shot. Honestly, like I feel like the fear of being shot is is gonna is gonna in, in, impair that ability for me. For me, at least. For me. We also don't know when she brought out the gun. He may have already been somewhat. Okay, you know, let, let me let me I, enlighten a little bit. I'm looking at the story now. So they were ha she convinced him to have unprotected sex with her, stating fair. the condom was irritating her skin. Fair enough. And he and he said she told him to pull out if he was scared of getting her pregnant. And then it's and then what the quote says from the guy this happened to. He says, "I think she knows I was going to pull out any second because she told me to slow down. Then reached for a pistol under her mattress, pointed it at my head, and told me to come inside her like God intended." I don't remember God sending down a tablet that said that. <laughs> the eighth commandment: chisel, 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 chisel. <laughs> I think that's in the fourth Corinthians, actually. <laughs> yeah. If you look into your no, um, yeah, man, that's fucked up. Let me just be the one to say it is that that's fucked up. Oh right? yeah, like that is. I saw that. I saw that, and I was like, that is one of the most insane things I've ever seen. Like oh, you hear shit. about like about you know rapes and forced sexual things, and a lot of times it's men doing it to women, but like mm -hmm. you don't hear about women holding guns on men and be like impregnate me. Jesus. I mean, now I'm scared. <laughs> now you're sc I'm not going on Tinder ever again. She's going to take home the other half of the sandwich and hold a gun on me. And that's, <clears throat> excuse me. And then another layer to that, besides the horror of him essentially being raped, is what if she did get pregnant from that? And then who raises the kid? Like, because she's obviously a bad person and he's oh, yeah. not a kid. And oh, yeah. You know that. Yeah. Well, then she can true. sue him for child support, and he nah. is a Dogecoin millionaire. No, nah. then the child suffers because he wouldn't yeah. be liable to pay that. That. Uh, My guess is that chick does not give an f about the baby if she has one. Right. Right. No, <laughs> She's exactly. trying to get paid from the from the millionaire of the Dogecoin. She doesn't care about the baby. He never wanted the child, so the child is the one to suffer. And no court, no court in the land is going to force them to pay child support. So, yeah, that's that's just an unfortunate story. I don't believe I don't believe that though. I think a court could say, "Well, you are mm -hmm. the father, and therefore mm -hmm. you have to take care of your kid." Mm -hmm. I think. Oh, that's I think that that's happens. how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a buddy who <laughs> they had they had a kid together, and they and everything. But since since they weren't married when they had the kid, the court really went with her on everything about deciding where, like where the kid was and what, because he wasn't the married father of the child. He was essentially just like the person who gave her the sperm. Like, so they could absolutely make that dude pay child support on that kid. I mean, granted the situation's a little weird, but I yeah. had a friend, a male friend who had his kid four days a week and the woman, his ex-wife had the kid three days a week. So he had the kid more, but he had to pay child support even though he even had the kid more and was so and she, the way he had to pay child support because she then had a baby with someone else and couldn't work because she then had two kids but he only had the one kid had the kid more and still had to pay child support all a crazy yeah, yeah the system could be very broken depending on the um because it's a very it should be a va very gray system but it's a black and white system it's like this mm -hmm. is how the law is written where do you fall in this gambit so, so we yeah. went from exploding U-Hauls to trying to figure out how to help society or just talking about the burdens of it. That's fun. 
<laughs> you know, hey, you know, it uh, it uh, happens. Uh, you know, we, we go all over the place. You guys remember <clears throat> Legends of the Hidden Temple? On, uh, do you ever watch that show? Mm-hmm. You I, ever heard of it? Shrine of the Silver Monkey. <laughs> there, there was a Nickelodeon kids show when, when uh, and it was called Legends of the Hidden Temple, and uh, I just saw that they are remaking it and casting adults, so it'll kind of be like a uh, like a wipeout sort of like show where there's like challenges and stuff. Yeah, it was very, uh, it was very Double Dare. Do you remember Double Dare? Nope. Okay, maybe they didn't have that in Canada. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm a little older than y'all. <laughs> You don't look any older than us. No. You don't look a day over 25, sister. Oh, we got some snaps. What are you, you like, 1986? <laughs> <laughs> Which I remember clearly. <laughs> I like 1986. It was a good year. I don't remember. Whatever, dude. I wasn't you born. Don't remember <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah? Oh, everybody else gets to pretend to be somebody else. I don't get to do it. I don't get to do it. I remember a lot of pastels and big shoulder pads. Yeah, yeah. I had this t-shirt when I was a kid. It was a green and white tie-dye shirt that said rad on it, and there was a guy on a skateboard. I remember that. That was a totally <laughs> like that was a total 80s shirt. Like, yeah. And I remember I got a discount on it because it had this like weird blue spot on it that like wasn't supposed to be there. And my mom was like, Oh, that t-shirt's discounted. We can get that t-shirt. You can't get the other one that you wanted. Mm. I mean Whatever. Wait, it was tie dyed and it had a weird spot. Like that's what tie dye is. I know, right? But it was green and white only, and there was a weird blue spot that I think some somebody got a hold of it. Something it was, was wrong with people back then. Did you ever have a side ponytail uh, tank? <laughs> like the I side- did like last week. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> My yes. um, my three year old niece loves side ponytails. Okay, it's okay. so cute. Yeah, of course I did. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I uh, I, I there used to be a girl that I went to middle school that used to do the top ponytail, and this was in like you know after the eighties. Like 80s. the one that would hang off to the side. Yeah, like the that was was that show the sn- snorkels or something. There was like, yeah. the snorks. The snorks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, exactly. It was just like that. So wow. So yeah. But I, uh, what's the, what was your favorite thing about the 80s that you wish it would come back? Smurfs. Wow, that was quick. That was quick. Where'd my brain go? <laughs> I know. I was just, at anything from the 80s, the Smurfs was Care, Care Bears. Oh, Care Bears. Um, what about your youth? What are you going to say? I don't know. Um, well, you know what? Those movies were good, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and The Breakfast Club, and John Hughes, John Hughes movies and just, Porkies. Oh yeah, I never saw Porkies. You wow. don't don't watch it. Do not. It was it's a uh, you know I was actually I saw an article the other day. Speaking of like the Porky's type movies, like the Revenge of the Nerds movie, about how many felonies they actually committed in that movie, and they were just like, "Oh, haha, whatever." Like they time. broke into the sorority house and put up cameras, and were watching them, and it was just, and everyone was just like, "Ha ha, go nerds! You're really getting them!" And like, it was such a popular movie forever, it and it was just, it was just awful. weird how there's awful. there's a lot of rape in Sixteen Candles, and I loved that movie. Um. Yeah, it was just like hijinks. High school no. boys. <laughs> right, right. You ain't getting away with that. Yeah, oh, okay, yep. look, look, I, I hate to switch gears. Favorite Smurf, go. Smurfette. Okay, fair enough. I mean, she's the one I suppose I related to the most. Fair enough. No, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I liked, I liked Gargamel. Yes. And I was I, real. I, yeah. was, a, I was a brainy Smurf guy myself. Sure. I don't remember yeah. enough of the Smurfs' names, so like I can't really pick one out. I have some Smurf figurines I could bring. <laughs> <laughs> there was Papa Smurf, there was Brainy, there was Sasset, which is, you know, very, very deep tier. She's a deep cut. Sasset was, Sasset? The, only other, she was the only other female Smurf. Oh, this is disgusting. What? Why didn't they have more females? Right? Like, how did they procreate? Oh, my God. Second female Smurf who was created by the same magic formula Gargamel had used to create Smurf It. Although the Smurflings who created her used a smaller amount of blue clay than what Gargamel had used for Smurfette, resulting in a female Smurfling. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Holy yeah. crap. She was younger too. 
Very weird. Yeah, Very she, weird. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how they pro. I don't know how they pro. There was Bronny Smurf, who was like the strong one. <laughs> but he was. God, just I like, don't he was remember a, enough he was about it. He was a Chad. He was a total wow. pro. Didn't care for him. <laughs> what was he? What was he lifting lifting weights and being Bas- like? Guys yeah. know where the weight room is. It's I mean, basically, that way. basically. Okay. They were, <laughs> all <right. laughs> they were all characters. Characters. All right. I should say. Well, you know that is all the time we have for today's episode. Uh, Tank. Do you have any closing words? Thank you so much for coming. Do you have anything you want to throw out there? I mean, the golden rule is always good. Aww, do unto others awesome. as you would do unto as they would do unto you. What is it? Do unto others as they would as you would do. have them do unto you. Yeah. I mean, if oh, stop, drop, and roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice call Follow back. the gold rule and stop dropping and roll if you ever catch on fire. Yeah. And don't and hold the phone. Don't become the phone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this um, is legit. This is a legit cringe. It happens every time. Like, <laughs> like it literally, and you can tell it's not a fake cringe. Like you just not, see it and like your body and just goes. Ugh. Both of them at the same oh. time. <laughs> I, I know I used to do that during class. All right. Um, Any closing hey, thoughts? Of course. Absolutely. I just want to thank Tank for spending time with us. She did not have to do this. She did this out of the kindness of her heart. We are not And the money. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I Jonas was... said there. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot. I told her that you were bankrolling this. I did. did All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already, it's already hit your cash app. Um, <laughs> and I just want to say is that I appreciate everything she, she, she taught us, even though she did get compensated for that, that it, it has meant a lot to us and that I value her as a person. She is so wholesome. And honestly, I, I strive to be as wholesome as she is. What? <laughs> you are. You're the most wholesome individual I have. At least you're portraying yourself th- that way. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad thing. I'm just very surprised that someone would see me that way. I, I don't know. I just, <laughs> honestly, I just, I just, I, adm- I admire a lot about you. Okay, that's what I. That's what I mean. Stop it! Go on. <laughs> <laughs> So to piggyback on that, yeah, thank you so much, Tank, for coming on and doing this with us. It's been it's been a lot of fun, and I yeah, we we do owe you a lot for uh, teaching us so much no. awesome improv stuff. So I owe you for entertaining me for eight weeks in my class, and the one week you showed up for the other class. Oh so, yeah, I was going to mention that earlier. Oddly enough, I was I think I did improv in reverse. I signed up for the class and then went for a free one the week before my class started, oh. and I was like, well, I'm already in, so at least I'll know what I'll be getting in for. So yeah. I did it well, backwards. Week one, there's a little repetition because, well, there was back in the day. Now I do it online differently. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> well, if you are still listening, please make sure to go to thecrazytown.com to follow on our YouTube channel or obviously Spotify, iTunes, all of that crap. But for Jonas, for TNT, for Tank, for Tank. I don't know. Oh, there's for Tank. We'll catch you on the next one. We are out.